Hi, it's Mike. Thanks for clicking into this video. Welcome to my channel. I'm in my shop today to show you a little bit of a tech tip. As some of you might know, I like to build tube amplifiers. So I like to build guitar amplifiers and I also like to build hi-fi amplifiers. So this would plug into a set of stereo speakers. So whenever I'm working on an amplifier, doing initial startup or testing voltages or anything to that matter, I always make sure I plug it into a current sink. Now, this funny looking device, you may say, is my current sink. So this is a homemade current sink and it uses a light bulb to draw most of the current. So what you do is you plug it into the wall, the hot light goes to the switch, goes through the light bulb, and then goes to the amplifier. So this light bulb is in series with the amplifier. So if the amplifier ever were to have a, a direct short or too much current draw, this light bulb would light up so you instantly know you have an issue and it would take most of the current and possibly not damaging or harming yourself in the event that that happens. So if that does happen, then you just quickly flick it off. And then you go investigate to see what the issue is. So I made this for under $30 and all the parts were available at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever your local hardware store. So I'll go through all the parts that I used to build mine and so you can get an idea how to build yours as well. And then we'll go through the motions and how I actually hook it up and how I use it to test an amplifier. So here we have a parks breakdown of our current limiting device and it's all based around this light bulb. So the, the key is to find a light bulb that has very high wattage and has very low resistance. So this is a pretty big light bulb and it only has a resistance of about 3.4 ohms whereas a normal 65 watt light bulb has somewhere around 14 or 15 ohms. So you want to get a low resistance high wattage light bulb. And of course a receptacle for the light. I'm going to put a switch on it so I can toggle it on and off if there's any issue. The receptacle, the box to mount that in, the faceplate, and a cable retainer because I'm going to put this into a box and then uh, an extension cord. Now I found that this is actually cheaper to buy an extension cord and just lop the end off rather than buying an actual cord at Home Depot because it's like three times the price. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, so this is the basis of our current limit device. So we got it all completed, all wired up. I like the blue cord because um, I can distinguish it better in my power bar. And we're going to keep this box. So when we're storing it, we'll just store it on this so we don't break this bulb. It's not a very expensive bulb, but uh, these type of incandescent bulbs are kind of getting hard to find nowadays since everything is going to LEDs. So this is a 300 watt bulb. Uh, the greater the wattage, the less resistant the bulb has and a better uh, current sink that it will provide. Um, you can use different bulbs, um, just normal incandescent uh, 100, you know, 100 waters or 75 watts, but what you'll end up happening is the bulb will actually maybe light up just a little bit as you have the amplifier on because it sees a little bit of current. So the bigger the bulb, the brighter the bulb, the more wattage, the less resistance, the, the better safety protection and it won't go on. If you do decide to build this and while you're at the hardware store, pick up one of these. It's an outlet checker and it will tell you if you actually wired it correctly. So what, what you do is you install it into your outlet, you turn the power on and these lights should light up. So this means that it's valid and everything is wired correctly. So if, if there are a different sequence of lights, it will tell you what's wrong with your outlet. So you check your wall outlet and you check this before you actually use it to make sure that you have it wired all correctly. And while you're there, pick up one of these. These are really handy tools. It will tell you if there's live wires around. And you can see that nothing there. We'll flick the switch. You can see it's all wired. So this is a good little tool to have. And I've also done a complete wiring diagram, so you can screenshot that if you want. So it tells you how to wire everything up. And I'll put a link in the description below on this, and so you can download it if you want. So I'll show you how it works here. We have an amplifier on the bench that we're doing some testing on. So the amplifier is plugged into the current sync device on the outlet. The current sync device is plugged into the wall. The hot leg comes all the way in to the switch, out of the switch, through the bulb filament, back out, and then to the plug. And then the hot wire goes and connects to the amplifier, and then the common goes directly to the outlet, and then to the amplifier itself. We're gonna turn it on now. And you can see the bulb did not light up. So that means that the amplifier itself is in a running mode, and it's drawing the right amount of current, and there's no shorts in it. So if you're ever doing any type of testing or analysis on a new amplifier, 
always make sure you have it plugged into one of this because if you make an error or a mistake or you slip on a probe or something like that, this device will take uh, the majority of the current. There is a lot of videos on YouTube that shows you how to do them. Everyone has a different little flair and how they make theirs. Um, if you want to be entertained, go over to Uncle Doug's. He actually shorts his out and shows you that really nothing happens to him, which I don't really recommend. So I hope this inspires you to build something similar. And once again, thanks for watching. In North America, our one pole is typically 120 volts, 60 hertz. Now in different regions, you may have 115 or 110. It's really up to the power department what they do. So the wide one here, the bigger one is typically the white or the common, and the smaller one is typically the black or the hot leg. 